Deb Cohen reporting there. We're joined now by Professor Stuart Neal, Professor of Virology and Head of Infectious Diseases at King's College London, and Dr Carl Waldman, former Dean of the Faculty of Intensive Care Medicine and a consultant with 35 years' experience in critical care. So hopefully between you, you can talk a little bit about the spread and also um, the capacity, the capability to actually deal um, with it. Professor Neil, if I can start with you, when, when you look at Italy, as we've just seen from Debs's piece, are you thinking we will be different, we can learn from that and be different, or are you thinking we will be there in approximately two, two weeks' time? We can certainly learn from that. There's, there's something odd about just the amount, how explosive this has been in Italy, and when, I, I don't think it's very clear whether there's something specifically about the demographic it's infected in Italy that makes it different from here. It but could be that they're an older population it, or that they test more. It or... could be, well, we're testing a lot right. here. Um, the difference in Italy is it's kind of emanated from one specific area, whereas in the UK it's been imported into various areas across the country. So, so what does that tell you then? A, a founder effect. A, you know, it's come into one part of Italy and then spread around. Whereas here it's come, I, we, th we think, predominantly from people travelling back here to various ports of entry into the UK. Now, whether you can use the measures that Italy brought in, are they appropriate in the UK? It's, it's very difficult to say. I, it, it's difficult to say. You said we're, we're very good at testing now. Yeah. What do you think... I think at the moment we've got um, sort of 360 confirmed yeah. cases. What do you think given that a lot of people won't know their results yet but have been tested, do you think that reflects the true figure or is it going to be substantially <sighs> different? So, so there's undoubtedly going to be more people infected than we know about because people will have mild symptomology, may not really think much of it. Um, the more we test, the more we find, the less of those unknowns there will be. And I think that's the lesson that's coming out of South Korea where they've done a lot of testing. Mm. They've really understood that there's a lot more people it, infected. Dr Morton, it's confusing at the moment for people watching when we announce a death from coronavirus here or, or elsewhere. If somebody is dying in hospital, in intensive care, and they test positive for coronavirus, how do we know that they died of corona or, or with corona? It's a very good question. We don't always know. Uh, so far, the uh, cases that have been reported generally have been el el more elderly patients with uh, coexisting diseases. And uh, I think the figures from Italy, in terms of death, they are in the older population. That's not to say that we won't see, as things go on, younger people suffering. You think we will? Um, it's, it's very possible. I, th I, th I haven't seen figures from China, but uh, certainly in Italy, the age at the moment is, seems to be the late 50s is where it's starting. Um, so it's a very difficult question to answer. thing in, that I think we uh, need to learn is I've spoken to someone who's in Milan. He hasn't seen his family for two weeks. That's mm. the gravity. He feels we've got 10 days to two weeks maybe to get our house in order. And what we need to do is really ensure that we do have an escalation plan. I'm, I'm not sure if you're aware, but we have five now, seven centres in the UK where beds will be allocated for patients to be transferred uh, the, the earlier cases. When that's full, then we have to make plans within our own hospital, which includes, if the ITU is full, using the operating theatres. That means cancelling elective surgery. And how similar are our health systems and our resource shortages? If, if uh, I think they... we're very similar. Uh, in terms of numbers of beds, Italy uh, is higher than the UK. The UK has... Uh, uh, has lacked beds, but things have improved. We do know that over uh, every year there's a 4% increase in the need for intensive care, and that's without having an epidemic. Right. Well, uh, so would you be asking the population to change their behaviour at all? Would you be looking at schools now or events? I think it's very difficult because, uh, of course, if you take people out of schools, um, uh, and in, that will include staff that work in hospitals. It, it's a very difficult problem, and I don't think we know the answer as yet. But certainly what the government is suggesting at the moment, trying to contain things, I think is the right thing, and, uh, and trying to delay any peaks so that we can cope with the surge when it comes. You think the spread in Italy, because you talk about it being very centred, and, and I mean, do you think there has been a link from China directly to Italy and from Italy directly to the UK? Can you even make that... Pattern. Um, that, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's highly likely. 
It's highly. I mean, you look at where when this has happened. It coincided with half term, lots of holidays. So a lot of people may be picking it up in northern Italy and coming back here. But would you well take be. that link right back to China from Italy, or is that a, a jump too far? I mean, I guess what um, we're trying to work out is whether whether Corona has just been in all our populations to some oh, extent. Oh no, 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 no. This is this is a very new thing, new importation. This is this hasn't been in um, Europe prior to the beginning of this year. What we understood in Italy, um, it, not, not as a policy, but it sounds as if they are putting their intensive care into those they think are best able to recover. Is that a, a, a formula or a structure that we would copy here? Um, again, I can't tell you, I can't look into the future and say that's what we will do. But obviously, the, if the demand is greater than the ability to provide facilities, one has to make... Um, uh, decisions based on, based on are these patients that would normally survive intensive care. So in intensive care, we do have 20 to 25 percent of patients that come in do not survive mm. in any case. So we'd have to look very carefully at that if we ran out of resources. We're hoping that we can, with the escalation plans, manage uh, the patients as we did with the flu pandemic. And I think what we have at the moment in the UK is we have one of the best health services in the world, whatever people say. Mm. Intensive care is one, one of the specialities where I think we can pride ourselves to say we have a very good training scheme, very good doctors, nurses, allied health professionals. It's one of, one of the you know, uh, key areas why people want to work in that speciality. That's really good to hear. And thank you both very much indeed for coming in. Thank you.